using lots of different vintage cameras is so amazing. It's like a whole big garage full of classic cars. Perfect for every occasion. What the? We need to get with the times. Welcome back. I hope you guys are well and I hope you enjoyed my debut in my acting career. Please hit the like button if you appreciated my efforts. So yes, you have got the right channel, Matt from MrLuck.com. And today, as you may have guessed, we're looking at something different. We are looking at Nikon F5s. Now you know how much I love tiny, small, classic cameras. So where did it go wrong? Stay tuned, this video has got a serious note and it will include the usual factual information and example photos. Let's take a look. I'll break this video into two parts. Firstly, I'll quickly cover some basics of the Nikon F5 camera and then the second part of the video will be why I've bought this camera. And if you enjoy some of the other cameras I've been showing on this channel, you may be able to relate to why I've just bought a Nikon F5 or a second Nikon F5. All that coming up, firstly, let's look at the camera. So if you can see beyond this lovely hunk of glass on the front of the camera, this is a Nikon F5. 35mm SLR camera. <laughs> it won't even fit on the screen. <laughs> First released in 1996 and was in production right through till 2004. So this was one of the last SLR cameras produced before everything went to digital. For any of you Nikon DSLR shooters, you'll probably recognise that the form of this camera is very similar to kind of the D4 and the, the kind of more modern DSLR cameras. Now I know normally I cover camera spec and I go through maybe the three or four buttons on the camera and explain each of those four buttons. It's slightly different when we get to cameras of this level. There is probably four functions on every button so there's absolutely no chance I'm going to be able to cover all the functionality on this camera and I only probably use one percent of the functions personally so I probably don't know the majority of the settings anyway but i'll just cover some of the basics which are important to me i'm so used to vintage cameras i came to look at the maximum shutter speed dial on the top and there's no maximum shutter speed dial marking on the top i can't really point to anything because because being a more modern camera all the settings are inside so you just have to take my word for it the nikon f5 has a maximum shutter speed of 1 over 8000 which is amazing if you want to shoot fast lenses such as this 85 1.4 nickel on a bright sunny day or some desert shoot or something like that. And it's said to have a maximum flash sync speed of one over 300. That's like crazy fast. I don't know about any of the 35mm camera that I own that has a flash sync speed of one over 300. Personally, I've only ever used it at one over 250 and that's my kind of go-to when I'm shooting strobes with the F5. And like my classic cameras, the F5 has a lot of automatic functionality. It has five point autofocus, if you're using obviously autofocus lenses. It has auto film advance and auto film rewind. So if you're kind of working in the field and you kind of, I don't know, run and gunning, say wedding shoots, you don't have to get your little crank and kind of, you know, I've got an old camera here. You don't need to get your little crank and you can see all the wedding, you see the bride's about to cut a cake and you've just run out of film and you're like, like a, like a crazy man, trying to wind your film back, reload it cock the shutter, all that good stuff, where the guy with the F5 is just like, bzz, bzz, finished. <laughs> Did you like my impression? I'm gonna come onto these aspects of the camera shortly, so stay with me. The Nikon F5 is an absolute tank. Now, as you know, I love very well-made cameras, and this is an absolute beast of a camera. If you can see, it's much deeper than a normal DSLR camera, or SLR camera, and this is because it has an integrated battery grip. We take that out this camera this camera requires eight AA batteries that's some serious juice and it obviously adds to the weight of the camera i know i love light cameras but bear with me the integrated battery grip means you can hold it here or here and you have a shutter release button here and here so it's really nice you can shoot like this all day or you can shoot like this all day and it's really comfortable. On top of all that, the F5 has a removable prism. If I can remember how to remove it. It has a really nice big bright viewfinder with 0.7 magnification and 100% coverage. So literally what you see in the viewfinder is exactly what you're gonna get. If you saw my last video, 
you can see the smile on my face already. A camera that gives you what it shows you in the viewfinder is like, oh, so refreshing if you're used to using vintage cameras. This prism is also interchangeable, so you can even use kind of waist level finders, things like that. So it's pretty cool if you want to kind of have a modular type camera. And this camera also shoots eight frames per second. Shall we see how long it takes to shoot a roll of film? Okay, so to show you how fast this camera will fire, I'm gonna sacrifice a roll of my favorite Foma Pan 100. So, take that out. Fresh roll. If we pop the camera, that opens the back. This is one of the easiest cameras you'll ever load. So put your film in. So easy I can even do it without looking what I'm doing. You, okay, maybe I need to look a little bit. You basically, you took it in here. Like so, shut the back. Press the shutter. See that? And we're ready to go. Okay, the film is in. Okay, get your watch ready. Pause the video if you don't have a clock. Are you ready? The things I do for YouTube. Count me down. One, two, three, go. I need to turn autofocus off. <laughs> okay, autofocus off. Okay, count me down. One, two, three, go. I was, trying to, I was trying to show my smoking barrel. Sadly with this lighting, you can't really see the smoke. My second attempt at being creative in this video. Okay, barrel smoking, time to unload. So there we are, saying end, we shot 38 frames. So now we can use the auto rewind feature and you can actually use auto rewind or manual rewind. I personally always do the last bit by hand because I like to keep the leader out. So it's really nice that it offers both manual and automatic. Right, I think that's it. And then if we pop the back, there is our, there is our smoking hot roll of 120 completely wasted. If you didn't hit the like button at the start of the video, that must be worth a like. Okay, I guess it should come clean. I already had the roll of film finished in the camera. So I showed you the roll of film finished, which I unloaded. And then I loaded a new roll of film into the camera, closed the back and then off camera, took the film back out, fired off my, what would be 38 frames of thin air. And then showed the second clip after taking my first roll of film out of the camera. Okay, so as you can probably see eight frames a second, shooting a whole roll of film in four and a half seconds that's going to cost you some serious cash if you do that in every photo shoot. In reality, I don't think anybody's going to do that these days, although this camera was very popular for kind of sport photography back in its day. But back in those days, film was actually affordable, so, so different times, different era. Okay, how much do one of these tanks cost? Now, this is where it gets really amazing. Bear in mind that we've looked at vintage cameras which have you could say semi-functionality or maybe vintage lenses, which they can be nice, don't get me wrong, but it's basically just a bit of metal and glass and without the camera, it's just, just that, it's a, it's a paperweight. So you'd expect a fully functional, full auto, everything tank of a machine to be what, a grand, a thousand pounds? Uh -uh -uh. One advantage of film going out of fashion and the Nikon F5 not yet being in fashion these cameras are ridiculously affordable relative to my other cameras that we've already covered. You can pick up a Nikon F5 Beta, like a very kind of battered, well-used camera, £250. That's like $325 for all that functionality. It's like, so amazing. And then if you're looking for a camera that's a bit cleaner, such as the copy I've got here, you'll probably pay anything from £350, $450 upwards to get like a nice clean copy that's been a bit more well looked after and 
less used. So personally, I'd rather pay slightly more and get a camera which is in a nice condition. I look after my camera, so I don't want to buy a camera that's already trashed before I even receive it. And the other metric we always cover, weight. You know how much I love small cameras. So what went wrong here? The Nikon F5 weighs 1.2 kilos, and I believe that's without batteries, obviously without a lens, which is 42.7 ounces. It's not light. And there's me with my little like a three cameras or like a CL at kind of 400 ish grams. Three times heavier than my Minolta CL, like a CL or say Besser L or like a three cameras, roughly three times heavier without lens. So with lens, probably four times heavier and a heck of a lot bigger than those cameras. Let me grab one for comparison. Okay, okay just for the giggle. Will it fit on the screen? Obviously neck and F5, like a three. Can you even see it? You can see my arm buckling. I'm like <laughs> I'm not really built for muscles. <laughs> I do endurance sports, not lifting, so a neck and F5, I'm like <laughs> but two-handed. I've got this, I can do this, two hands. Okay, that's enough fun. Do you want to see some photos? I'll talk you through while I'm showing the pictures. So firstly, portraits. One big benefit of the Nikon F5 is I enjoy using this camera with longer lenses. So I enjoy lenses like the amazing Tekina 100mm f2.8 macro lens. I enjoy the Nikkor 180mm f2.8. I've got a 200 f2. And basically when I use a Nikon F5, it gives me a totally different look to my images than using perhaps my Leica M3 because like a rangefinder cameras or any rangefinder cameras are not built to use with long lenses. Obviously you can use it with a 90mm or 135mm, but you can't really shoot with 180mm or 200mm for example. With my eyesight, the autofocus and long lenses combined work really well for my lack of 20-20 vision and it means I can focus accurately on subjects more than say a couple of meters away. Another great benefit of using longer lenses is I can do the kind of the shoot through style photography and you can get some really nice depth and kind of compression in your images by using longer lenses. On all my range finders, as you probably know, I shoot almost all 50mm and sometimes maybe 35, occasionally 28. So 50mm gives me a great look, but sometimes it's just nice to switch it up a bit and to do that, the Nikon F5 is amazing. Another great use I found for the Nikon F5 is telephoto landscape photography. Now you probably don't know me as a landscape photographer because generally speaking I photograph models, but occasionally when I go traveling, I do enjoy taking photos on my trip. Now these photos are taken in San Francisco, I believe it was 2017, maybe 2018, and I took the Nikon F5 with the 180mm f2.8 lens. I absolutely love the detail captured and the compression that the 180mm lens gives. I treated myself to shooting some slide film and I think you can really see the resolution. So those are a few photos, I hope you like them. And let's look at some pros and cons. This is potentially the more important part of the video. To answer the basic question you may have to me of why you like vintage rangefinder cameras. Small, beautifully made, mainly with a Leica badge on, <laughs> you could argue. So what happened? Why have I got a full auto SLR, super heavy, opposite to everything I like camera? So firstly, the pros. I love using the Nikon F5 with long lenses, especially with autofocus lenses, generally 85mm or longer. I enjoy the big bright viewfinder with the 100% coverage. I love the durability of this camera. Yes, it's plastic, but it is so well made. It is just, it just fits your hand like it was so well made by Nikon. I really like this camera despite it not being made in 1950, 1960 and looking more plasticky rather than metal. And another very useful feature is having the auto advance, auto rewind. There's no kind of cocking the shutter. Obviously cocking the shutter can be a really nice experience when playing with classic cameras. But sometimes if you're working with clients and shooting film, having a faster to use camera is a real benefit. The cons of this camera, obviously, it takes up your entire camera bag space compared to I could probably carry four like a three cameras or one Nikon F5 with a with a lens and that's really the only negatives I can think of. So what happened? So if you cast your mind back to the very beginning of this video I was pretending to be dreaming and thinking how amazing life is with all these vintage cameras. The actual reality was I wasn't living the dream as it were. What I've been finding is by using all these vintage cameras I've been shooting less and less film on model shoots. The main reason is these cameras are not built to be fast. 
and they're not and some of them are not built to be easy to use in terms of like I'm looking through the viewfinder and I can't see what the heck I'm supposed to be focusing on. Or many of the cameras are limited to one metre closest distance. And I want to be at half a metre, for example, so I just don't use the camera. And I've, and I've just noticed a pattern where I was shooting less and less film on every shoot. And so it got to my usual danger zone time, which is Friday evenings when I'm normally overtired and on eBay. And I was like, you know what? Why am I making myself struggle with all these antiquated cameras and not actually getting the shots because they're too slow to use when I'm working with a model in many situations? Obviously, there's lots of exceptions, but the cameras I've been testing more recently, especially, were really kind of like, come on, I, I just wasn't using them. Then the beautiful model left, I got home, checked my camera, and I might have shot three, three frames. And it's the film photos which are value from my photo shoot, not the digital. The digital, like, give them to the model, put them on my hard drive, never see them again. And so that means I've only got three photos to show from my time with that amazing model. It isn't enough. I kick myself because I might not see that model again. I might not see them for one year, two years. Sometimes you see them and then they leave the planet for a couple of years. So I was getting a lot of regret after the shoots that I wasn't capturing what I was seeing on film. Now let's just cover another important aspect. Many of us shoot vintage cameras and vintage lenses because vintage lenses give us a certain aesthetic to the photos which is completely different from modern lenses such as this Tamron. Modern lenses will give you a eh, kind of look. They won't give you something special in many cases. They'll give you sharpness, but they won't give you the quirks and the character that you'll get from, from vintage lenses. But, and this is a big but, living in the UK, I'm shooting indoors maybe half of the year because the weather's so rubbish. It might be wet days in the summer and I'm shooting inside, or it might be the dark autumn through to winter, through to spring evenings where I'm shooting inside as well. When you're shooting inside and you're shooting against a screen, it doesn't matter what lens you're using. You can use a 1950s classic lens or you could use a off-the-shelf crappy plastic lens. The only thing that's important when you're shooting indoors, from my experience, is the lighting and the posing. So for that reason, why was I struggling to use a 1950s camera where you can't see any of the character of the actual lens all you're trying to do is frame the model and get and get near enough to get them to fill the frame. So that means I don't need all those classic lenses if I'm shooting indoors. I just need a lens and a camera which will allow me to work quick enough to capture the photos so I have something to show for it at the end of the photo shoot. That is why I bought the Nikon F5. It does what I need it to do. Now of course there are vintage cameras which are much more able than other vintage cameras or some cameras which are not quite classic but film cameras rather than digital cameras. Great alternatives would be the like M3, like M2 especially, kind of my favourites. Like M3 more because I like the 50mm crop. Mine's modified to 0.7 metres. That's absolutely perfect, except I can't use it with flash very easily. So if I'm shooting flash, not the like M3. Other great alternatives would be the older Nikon SLR cameras, the Nikon FM, the Nikon FE, FE2. They're the three cameras I've got. Obviously the Nikon FM2 is very popular, Nikon F3 that kind of era of cameras where you can use flash, but it's a much smaller setup. Obviously they're manual focus lens cameras, but I'm always working in close proximity indoors, so I'm more than happy to use those cameras as well. And then lastly, if you want autofocus and you want a smaller setup, you could get something like the Nikon F4, which I also have. I tend to travel with the F4 if I want to shoot autofocus, because the F5 can sometimes be over my, over my weight limit for my kind of airline bag capacity. So those are some real alternatives where I could have used those cameras instead of this camera. I do prefer the viewfinder of the F5 over the F4. I do generally prefer everything of the F5 versus the F4. And then I can be in my studio with the, say, digital Leica like CL camera and the Nikon F5. And it is as quick to shoot with the Nikon F5 as it is with the Leica like CL. So I used this camera on my last shoot and I shot an entire roll within like an, an hour and a half. Combine that to the, say, three or four classic cameras I've been testing in the last few months there's been a roll of film in there for maybe one or two months because I'm shooting so few frames of those photos so in summary I bought the Nikon F5 because I wanted a workhorse film camera where I'm not bothered about the lenses as much I just needed a camera to allow me to accurately capture the model during the photo shoots so I had something to show for it at the end of the session I think the Nikon F5 offers a fantastic value if you're looking for a camera with autofocus. Obviously, if you want a smaller camera, look at one of the Nikon SLR cameras. If you're kind of like me and you've only really got a 
a mantelpiece full of <laughs> classic cameras and nothing a bit faster. And lastly, you may wonder why I have two Nikon F5 cameras. I've had one a long time. I will link the blog post below this video with lots of example photos and it'll have a date on there. I'm not sure exactly when I bought it. And then the battery cell corroded the inside of the camera and it stopped working. So when I was trying on eBay, I think it was last Friday, I was like, I'm just gonna buy another Nikon F5. And now I can use the same battery grip on both bodies and both bodies work, I've tested it. So now I've got two working Nikon F5s again. So it's really great to have a backup. So that explains why I have two of these cameras. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Feel free to score my acting efforts on a score out of 10 in the comments below. And if you've not yet subscribed, you may want to subscribe. This channel will include more SLR cameras as well as rangefinder cameras going forward, as I do use both. Big thanks to my patrons as always. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Bye. Every told. <laughs> <laughs>